Welcome back to another Jay's Two Cents video where today we're going to show you some real world benchmark results of overclocking my processor and my motherboard so you can see how that really equates to frames per second and performance of your processor and your video card. Let me start off by saying that this is not a tutorial about how to overclock so you're going to have to look somewhere else if you're trying to get information about how to overclock. There are just too many variations and too many different components out there for me to possibly give you information about how to overclock your setup. And if you haven't already figured out by the images I'm showing above of the BIOS for my motherboard, there are, are a ton of settings that you can go in and mess with and you can cause permanent damage to your computer if you do something incorrectly. So be careful. My motherboard is a Asus Republic of Gamers Crosshair Vive formula. And I went with this motherboard because it has, I think the greatest feature set out of any of the stock motherboards. So it gave me control over every single aspect I could possibly need when it comes to overclocking. And the processor I'm using is the AMD FX 8120. That is the lower end of the two eight core processors that AMD currently offers. The high end is considered the 8150. And I always save a little bit of money when it comes to processors because I always overclock the shit out of them. And I do the best I can to save money and pull it back out of the processor through overclocking, which is the whole reason I always overclock. Spend less, get more performance by pushing it to the brink. This image I'm showing now consists of a couple of programs that I use to do monitoring of the temperatures and voltages of my various components in my computer. Uh, top left there is my, what is that? It's my fan control software. Speed fan, that's it. That's my speed, <laughs> speed fan software. And that's what I use to control my fans on various temperatures and other things. The bottom left is MSI Afterburner. That's what I use to overclock my video card. Right now everything is set to stock for all of the CPU tests. The red piece of software in the middle there is CPU-Z. That is a CPU informational program. It gives you everything you need to know about your processor. It shows you voltage, multiplier, the front side bus speed, the memory cache, memory caches, if it makes sense. That's the, <laughs> the L2, L3 cache when it comes to the processor. Everything you need to know, including stepping, all of that stuff. So that's what I'm gonna be showing you where the clock speeds are. And the piece of software on the right is hardware monitor that shows all of the temperatures, all of the voltages, everything going on in my computer in just one space right there. And that's what we're gonna to use to compare some of our temperatures of before and after overclocking. At stock settings, the processor has a throttling function where it will actually slow down to 1.4 gigahertz when it's not seeing a load. It does that to save power and to save temperature. But as you can see right here, once we loaded up the 3D Mark 11 software, it ramped right up to its stock speed of 3.4 gigahertz. Temperatures look pretty good. CPU sockets at 35 degrees Celsius. Uh, cores are sitting right around the mid 20 degrees Celsius. And things are looking pretty cool and comfortable right now at stock speeds. Showing you right here that the graphics card is at stock speed. Uh, my particular card does ramp up to 1.124 gigahertz, even though it's advertised as uh, 1,075 megahertz, so who knows. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna show some various frames per second capture here, some of the screen of what it looks like when it's doing its benchmark, and we'll just kind of skip through this here, and we'll circle back at the end of the test. This next test coming up here is the physics test. And on 3D Mark 11, all physics scores are calculated by the CPU. This is a CPU load. There is no load on the GPU whatsoever. So this is where the overclocking of the CPU is really gonna show. And as you can see right here, I'm only getting between 14, 15 frames per second. I think it maxes out somewhere around 17, 18, maybe tops. It's very jittery, very choppy. And this is where uh, you know the CPU speed really, really comes in handy. And I think we're zooming in here. Yeah, 16.8 frames per second. Very poor, very choppy, <laughs> very bad. Not good. The last thing that 3D Mark 11 tests is a combined test between the CPU and the GPU. The CPU is doing all of the physics and the GPU is doing all the tessellation and other graphics enhancements to the video here. So, the frames per second here is looking like we're right around uh, 19 frames per second. Nothing impressive. This is usually where AMD just falls on its face, especially in the stock scores. 
and that is blatantly obvious with the 8244 score when it comes to the AMD processor. And that honestly just has everything to do with its poor physics performance. Uh, you look right there at the physics score, it's only 5520. The graphics score is outstanding at a 10,147, but the combined score is only a 4949. What that means is the CPU could not keep up with the GPU, and it, uh, it's pretty obvious there. Stock speeds are nothing to be proud of. We are right in the middle of the pack there, as you can see by the yellow graph, and there's just nothing spectacular at all about that performance from the CPU. In the summertime, due to the higher heat, I run my CPU at right around 4.7 gigs, as you can see right here. From 3.4 to 4.7, we're talking 1.3 gigahertz overclock. The temperatures are idling right around 37 degrees Celsius. The GPU is still sitting here at stock speeds. Nothing spectacular there. It is the GTX 680, since I never mentioned it in the beginning. My cores are idling right now at 20 degrees Celsius. I don't really think that's accurate because it jumps between 20 and 25. I think it just has to do with a temperature sensor on there. It's not being very accurate. Um, but you can see um, fresh boot, 37 minimum, 38 maximum. But what you might be interested to realize here is that the frames per second in the test didn't really improve. That just goes to show that the GPU is taking on the majority of the load when it comes to gaming and, and graphics performance. Uh, especially in a synthetic benchmark like this where it's pre-programmed, it's going through the same function, It's you always using the same process and I like to use synthetic benchmarks because they are a good control and you get the same result uh, for the most part and you can really compare the differences but as you can see through these tests here they're really the same as test number one at the stock 3.4 gigahertz speed but when it gets to the physics test it's a whole nother story if you remember from the first test our physics score at the stock clock maxed out at right around 16.7 frames per second. But now if you take a look here, we are just flying right past that up into the 20s, 21. Everything looks a lot smoother. It's a lot more fluid. And we are at 22.2 frames per second. So that's already eight frames per second increase. And that's pretty amazing considering it was absolutely free power. And the combined test is absolutely no exception. As you can see right here, already getting much higher frames per second. Things are going much smoother in the test. And that was by doing nothing more than overclocking the CPU itself. And the graphics card is not overclocked at this point. So, so we managed to jump from 8,244 to 9,072. That's a pretty good jump considering this is all free power. It just was by doing nothing more than overclocking your processor. And we went from a 5520 to a 7271 physics score. And you'll also notice we jumped up an entire bracket on the performance chart. And last but not least, I'm gonna take my MSI GTX 680 graphics card reference model, which is water-cooled of course, and I'm going to push this thing to 1.3 gigahertz, which is the max stable overclock I've been able to achieve to see what happens if you use a overclocked CPU in conjunction with a overclocked GPU. I push my graphics card to a plus 176 megahertz, which brings it to an even 1.3 gigahertz, and an additional 311 megahertz on the memory. And from the very first frame of the very first test, it's extremely obvious that we are getting a much higher frames per second. I think we're getting an average of 10 additional frames per second by doing nothing more than moving some sliders on the MSI Afterburner software. You gotta keep in mind though that graphics cards do get extremely hot, especially when you overclock. So one of the reasons why I'm able to get such an extreme overclock and make it stable is because I am running it on water. And the maximum temperature that my graphics card ever got during any of these tests was 51 degrees Celsius. And that was with my office door shut and the ambient temperature reaching 83 degrees in this office. So normally if I keep the room open and have some ventilation in here, it doesn't get anywhere above 45 degrees. And as you can imagine, there are some improvements when it comes to the combined test since it is using the GPU as well as the CPU. That is very smooth. It looks like a movie, it's very fluid. We're gonna hit, uh, it looks like 26 frames per second or 25.9. So let's go ahead and take a look at how it did live. It's pulling up the results, uh, 3D Mark 11. And I think we're gonna break 10,000. Yes, 10,015. So we gained, another 800 or so P score by simply doing nothing more than overclocking the graphics card. So by squeezing out extra performance that's already in your processor and your 
video card, we managed to go from a low 8,000 to just over 10,000 on the P score and all the way up to the maximum bracket. We are in the top percentile when it comes to performance and we didn't pay any extra money for it whatsoever unless of course you're gonna count the additional cooling needs that you are gonna have to take into consideration. Overclocking does add temperature, it does add voltage, and so you need to be able to deal with that heat. So I hope this gives you a little bit of an expectation of what to expect if you're gonna look into overclocking either your video card or your CPU or both. And I wish you all the best when it comes to your overclocking results and that you find some free power like I did. I hope you've enjoyed today's video regarding overclocking your CPU and video card and gaming performance that you can expect. Click the video on the left to check out my latest video regarding water cooling and things you need to know. And click the video on the right to check out my brand new series coming out every Friday called Tech Addiction. And don't miss a brand new episode coming out this Friday. As always, your subscription would be greatly appreciated. And follow me on Twitter for the latest up-to-date news on what I'm doing on YouTube.